Well, hey, McFly subscribers. So this is what we're going to be tying today. It's called the two-bit hooker. It's an interesting name for a fly, but um, it is a really good fly. I believe this is originally tied by Charlie Craven, I, I think his name is. So we're going to put two beads on a hook like so. And hence the name two-bit. Uh, two bit. And we're tying the size 18. I'm using Risen's um, Emerger hooks, 2488 is what they call it. Um, it's a 3x wide, 2x short. Now, you might want to try to see if you can find a hook that might not be short, but they call this short, and I feel that this is a standard size in all honesty. So it will be a little easier if you actually go with a little bit longer shank hook, but it'll work with this one. Um, and it does, like I said, feels like a little bit longer hook. Um, but I like these because they're pretty strong for the size of hook, very sharp, um, and they're a really good price. I mean, Risen does great. If you follow me, you know that I, I love their stuff. So again, size 18, it's a small fly. And we're also putting a size two millimeter, or two two millimeter tungsten uh, bead, okay? And I'm using gold. You could use whatever colors you want. And then for thread, I'm using Vivas Tenot in their olive color. I'm tying an olive fly. So we're just gonna, right behind the bead, start the thread. You can break or snip off the, the thread. And then we're gonna twist this so that way it's nice and flat. See how it made that flat? So now it's gonna be a nice even body. We're gonna come down a little bit ways, as you can see, leave ourselves a little bit of a body here. And next I've got this, it's a Coq de Leon uh, hen feather. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the feathers, we're gonna line the tips like so. We're gonna take about eight to 10 of these fibers, line those tips, pinch it, rip it off. And then we are going to measure out and see how that kept that aligned. Gonna measure out about a hook gap, tail, maybe a little less. I do a pinch wrap, do it however you want. There we go. I don't like a very big tail on these. If you wanna make two wraps, you're welcome to do it. I find that that might make the next step easier. Next, I got Vivas 10 knot, but in brown, and this is gonna be your ribbing and also the tying thread. All right, so give yourself quite a bit of length and rest the bobbin on the table. I like to wet this to stiffen it up and I hold it down at an angle like so. And believe me, that is not as easy as that looked. Can't tell you how many times I made a mistake on that. Um, so we wrap up, take some fine point scissors. By the way, I'm using Risen's, um, they call them mitten scissors. Um, but they're super fine point, super precision, really fine tip scissor. It's a really good scissor. Now you don't have to use those, but they're very good. So now we're gonna uh, twist our bobbin to make sure that this is nice and flat so we can have a really smooth body. We're gonna come down to right at that tail. Well, you don't wanna Close off that tail and then we're going to come back and now we're going to build up a little bit of like a taper. So we're going to go down partially and then back up. Go ahead and twist if it starts cording up on you. And then again, back down. Excuse my squeaky bobbin and back up. And you can tell that we built a little bit of a base there. Now, as you can see, I've got a little bit of room for these to wiggle. You want that. You don't want to go too far up and push this up. You want to give some room. And then we're just going to, just a simple two turn whip finish. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. There we go. Now, because we have this so long, now you got to bring this thread, the, the tip back up like so. And we are just going to now, as you can see, this is really corded up. You want to cord this up, which I had done while I was winding it. You don't want this flat because we're making a rib. There we go. Tell. So that is the rib now on the fly. And then we're just gonna 
Make two wraps there to lock that there so it doesn't push forward. And next I got this medium tinsel, pearl tinsel, the medium size will work. Now this tinsel comes off of that spool. You could, you know, you could also use flashaboo. That could work, but it comes off of that spool all twisted. So it's kind of tough to work with, but as you can see, I start kind of on the side and let the thread bring that up over so that way it stays right on top. All right, a couple tight wraps, lock that into place. And I've got a little tag in there. Try to avoid that if you can, but it's gonna move back anyway, so it'll fix that. Now, as you can see, when I let go, that gets in my way. So I've got these little hair clips, mini ones I got from my daughter. I just use this and I clip it back on the back part of my vise to get that out of the way. Now I've got something called UV2 Fine and Dry, okay? It's a uh, dubbing, it's a super fine dubbing. And this stuff, you need something really fine because you gotta dub this on really, really, um, like, uh, tight. Couldn't think of the word there. So we are going to make a little bit of a dubbing ball back here. Equal about the size of that bead. Okay, we're going to need slightly more. I'm going to back this out just a little bit. You want it a fine uh, noodle. You don't need a really thick noodle, but you want it dubbed on to where it's it's nice and compact on there. You'll see why in a second. You can even use your, uh, like, lick your fingers a little bit to get a little bit of a, you know, finer wrap. There we go. And then we're just going to wrap up. It's a little tricky. Sometimes I find if I put my fingernail in between, wrap over. I want it up over the top, though. And then in between. There we go. Now we're going to wrap right in between. And you're just building up in between those two, giving yourself a nice spot to put the legs. Next, I've got quite a bit of fibers here, you can see, um, and I am just going to pinch the tip. I've got them aligned and rip them off, and then I find this a lot easier because these squirrelies are going to get in the way. I cut this. We don't need a lot of length. And then you just bring See if I can get this better in the camera. I'm just going to split these roughly in half. Bring them out. Bring a split. See how they're split now? A little split right there. I'm going to rest that split right on top. As you can see, this is curved angled this way a little um, because that thread is going to want to turn those. Oh, stuck to my finger. Welcome to tying. There's always mistakes. All right, so there we go. I've got quite a few fibers. Maybe a little less than last time. That's okay. And I'm sorry, I'm doing this off camera, guys. It's just, it's hard to do on camera. There, so I split those, as you can see. And I'm just going to lay them over so they're half on top, or half on one side, half on the other. I'm going to pinch them tight, make sure I don't pull them out of my fingers again, and then there we go. It kind of worked out. Got a couple more on the bottom than I'd like. Let's see if I can get those worked. So one, two, and then that was the third. I'm gonna really tighten those down. So you really want these really fine point scissors. I'm gonna pull this back 
I'm sorry, my fingers are kind of in the way. I'm trying not to have that happen. I'm gonna come in as tight as I possibly can and cut those off. Do the same thing with these. You don't wanna to pull too hard or you pull out those legs. Okay. We can work that down. Now, I'm gonna simply go up over like so. And get that right on top. Tie that in so it's, let's see, make sure it's not canted off to the side. There we go. All right, so we're gonna make two wraps. I'm gonna pull this back. Make two more wraps. Okay. Now we're gonna pull this up real close. Oh, I missed that, but that's okay. I can pull down on my thread and pull that off. There we go. Pulling down on the thread helps tighten that, so. Simple, we just whip finish right there. Go ahead and cut off the excess. That kind of turned out okay. It's not as fancy as I'd like it. The other one's a little cleaner. It's just hard on the camera, guys. So, anyway, next, I've got this Solarez. This is a medium viscosity. Okay, I'm gonna take a bodkin and just get a little drop. Right about that much is good. And we're gonna move these down and out of the way. Clip that drop. Right there, come back to the back. Touch, as you can see, I touched right back to there. And then while we're here, we can move it off to the side a little, really get that whip finish. And I'm happy with the way that looks. So let's go ahead and zap it with the UV light. And you can see how much those, those legs glow, they're chartreuse, so anyway, there we go. So that medium viscous, or viscosity, is almost the perfect uh, viscosity for this. It's gonna, as you can see, it still makes a little, a little bit of a bump over the top, um, but it it doesn't run, but it also doesn't get too bumpy. I, I kind of like these a little bit less bumpy. So there we go. That's that, and this is super durable. Um, obviously, with two tungsten beads, this is gonna sink absolutely one of the fastest sinking flies um, this works really well as like your uh, lead fly um, to get it down quick and then you can drop something a little more natural off the back of it if you want if you're going to do a two fly system and this will get it down almost like adding like a, you know, a split shot or something um, this will help get your fly down um, perfect little betas pattern and especially this color it's like a blooming olive almost um, but you can tie it any color you want but yeah, I believe, like I said, it's Charlie Craven pattern. I could be wrong on that, so let me know if I am, but I believe that's his, this is his pattern, but um, I'm, I, I think he's probably tied it on video before, so definitely check his video out. Um, I'm sure his is probably a lot better since he's the one that created this fly, but I wanna show you guys this in case you hadn't seen it before. It is, if you're looking for something that sinks fast, um, small little fly, as you can see, there's my finger. Um, they're, they're not the super easiest to tie, I'm going to be honest, but they, but they do work. And once you get the hang of it, I mean, you can get through quite a few of these pretty quick. I mean, it's not a zebra midge, but, um, you know, you can get through them. So if you haven't already, check out my sponsor, Risen Fly. They made the, the hooks and the beads that I used today. They also sell, and the scissors, actually. Um, I really like these scissors, by the way. Um, they also sell rods and reels and pretty much anything you need to fish and everything they sell is really high quality but also um, really good prices I mean for instance I think these these beads are some of the best tungsten beads uh, I mean quality tungsten beads I've seen some out there where the, the eyes are different sizes or like there's burrs coming off of them these are as you can see they're all good every single one that you get they're good there's no issues with them um, so uh, but they're they're inexpensive. Uh, don't quote me on the price right now. I'm sorry, guys, but definitely check them out. I, I mean, I, I do a lot of shopping because I sell flies, and so I'm always looking for the best prices, and I'm, I'm telling you, Risen's for good quality is the best I've found on beads, on hooks, um, great quality hooks. These are, these are great. 
and also um, their rods um, they, and reels. Uh, they have a $100, $119 rod that uh, after, after a discount, by the way, I'll tell you about that in a second, but after the discount, it's about 100 bucks, and it outfishes some other you know, three or $400 rods I've got. And it's a really good rod. It's called the Genesis, Risen Genesis. So it's a very good rod. Um, but they sell other gear as well, some higher quality than even that. Um, but everything they sell is very, very, very high quality, very good, um, and uh, just amazing prices for what they are. So um, if you want that discount, type in McFly at checkout, and you'll get a 15% off discount on your first order with them of anything you buy in the shop. And then after that, sometimes they'll, you know you can sign up with them for email, and they'll send you, you know, coupons and stuff. And some of these coupons can be up to. 20% off, so um, that could help. So that's after you buy with them, so they can they can do that. But your first order, you definitely get 15% off. It's gonna help. Well, anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Hope you like the fly. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that like button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Now you go catch some fish.